30. Okay, 5.30 having arrived, I am going to call the uh, public hearing uh, to order, and I'm going to start by reading the notice of public hearing into the record. Notice is hereby given of a public hearing to obtain input regarding the relaying out of Thurston Pond Road as a Class 6 highway pursuant to the authority vested in the Board of Selectmen by RSA Chapter 20, uh, Chapter 231,8 to lay out and reconfirm the status of, as Class 6 highways the following roads. Number one, the portion of Ridge Road beginning at its intersection with Range Road and terminating at its intersection with Thurston Pond Road. And number two, the portion of Thurston Pond Road, also known as Ridge Road, beginning at its intersection with Middle Road and terminating at the outlet of Thurston Pond. This hearing shall be held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for the public to offer comment on the relaying out of the road. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 27, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. The hearing shall be held at the George B. White Building, 8 Raymond Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. And I'll give just a little bit of background before we start taking public comment. Um, questions have arisen over the status of uh, Ridge Road, um, sometimes called Ridge Road Extension, and Thurston Pond Road. The select board has received a petition requesting a layout and reaffirmation of the Class 6 status of portions of Ridge Road Extension and Thurston Pond Road, not previously reaffirmed as Class 6. Um, the Board of Selectmen in 1991 did relay out portions of these road as Class 6, and there has always been sort of a cloud over the status of the road. Um, from my research, there are multiple plot plans identifying the road portions in question as Class 6. There is one plot plan that does not identify a portion of Ridge Road as Class 6. Uh, it shows it reverting to a butters, and that's uh, a little over 200 yards of the beginning of the road. Um, further research uh, that I've had a chance to look at uh, appears to show the road portions in question having originally been laid out on July 10th, 1772 by Selectman Jeremiah Eastman, Richard Jenis, and Simon Marston. It appears that the layout for the road was originally three rods, that would be 49 and a half feet wide, um, and I believe the, uh, the stone walls along the side of the roads in question clearly delineate that. Um, it also appears that the road, uh, the property for the road, was a fee title purchased by the town of Deerfield. Um, and I will leave it at that. And from here, uh, we would take public comment. And if you wish to make public comment, please head to the table over there um, and take a seat at the microphone. And I would recognize Mr. Cross first. Hello, um, my name is Jacob Cross. Uh, I reside and will be residing at One Range Road off of the extension there. Um, I've been to many meetings, I haven't met many. I'm glad to see so many faces here today um, as this is an important issue. So just to give a, a very quick surmise of my position on this is um, I, I grew up in Deerfield as a child. I moved out when I was uh, in my early 20s, and I moved to uh, Raymond for a number of years. I decided I always wanted to move back to Deerfield and had always planned to. At a time when land became available, albeit where I'm building the house, which is off of the what we're calling Ridge Road extension, that land became available. I made a plan um, for my life in regards to selling my house uh, and building on that property. We went through all the proper channels. We got the building permit, and we began building back there. We ran into some hostility right off the beginning from neighbors who weren't happy with uh, development happening on land that had never been developed before. But again, understanding, we tried to be very friendly with all, in regards to all of that. Um, for those who are unaware, uh, when the site was first started, I actually had a number of incidents of vandalism on site, and I actually have two open police reports regarding to that that have never been fully addressed. And that is why if you ever walk past my property, you'll see that there is a sign stating that it's under video surveillance, and that was because of early vandalism. Um, nothing major, but still vandalism on the site. The issue with the road in regards to the status was started by the town. We never brought it up as a question. We had our understanding that our plot plan showed that we owned the road. That's why we built back there. That's why we used it as an extension for the driveway access. When it was brought up on the town, it was mentioned in several different ways. 
and it was brought back and forth and argued that potentially if we owned that road the beginning of the road that we could block it off or cease access or bar and grade it or any of those things uh, it was then through several meetings that that was brought up several times with many concerns from people that never once was asked of us there was net we have never been approached by any citizens of the town we have never been approached by the t by the town council at any time to have any form of conversation as to what our plans were with that road we never once said we were stopping access we never once stopped anybody from using that road for walking i have said hello to any person that i see on that road and have met one or two people who walk down there regularly so the whole status of where we are today is uh, the town making vast assumptions and then townspeople panicking because of those assumptions and now we are here again we never made a statement that we were going to do anything and we were open for conversation on any occasion that anybody wanted to come down there and speak with me all we ever asked from the beginning was for the town to clarify the status as the status has never been fully clarified and again we followed the proper channels did everything properly and then all of a sudden we became the villains for something that was nothing we had anything to do with from the beginning with the town having uh, inconclusive information on the status of the road conflicting information in the town records that we based off of for our building permit so again we did get a proper permit we did follow everything properly down the roads and for some reason everyone has now viewed us as trying to steal a road trying to take a position back trying to stop people's access or anything along those lines I am always open for conversation I am at that site every day and every weekend I am always there working and I open anybody who would like to come back and have a conversation with me about concerns or questions regardless of what the outcome of this meeting is that I am always willing to talk to any of my neighbors or any uh, members of the town on anything further and that's all I have to say Great. thank you mr. cross yes Joanne Bradbury good evening and thank you for your time I have given each of you members of the board a uh, packet that has my statement in there and a map that I'll be referring to um, and the town documents uh, were provided to all of you back in June uh, with a cover letter uh, but I want to be sure they are included as part of tonight's meeting so those that packet is roughly 19 pages that shows all the exhibits from things that happened in 1991 that I like to um, lay out so my name as you mentioned is Joanne Bradbury I live on Thurston Pond Road uh, Thurston Pond Road in its entirety and the unpaved portion of Ridge Road are recreational cultural and historical gems these roads belong to the town and should remain town property for the people of Deerfield we are now asking the Board of Selectmen to act favorably on the petition to lay out and reconfirm the classic status of the ends of Ridge Road and Thurston Pond Road. These ends of the roads, in the map that you have, mostly you all have a map, these, these uh, ends of the roads are marked in orange on that map. Um, the layout of the middle section of the T that you see there, marked in yellow, was voted and reconfirmed as class six by the board uh, of selectmen on the 16th day of september 1991 and that is in all the materials that i provided you minutes of the meetings and all the signed documents this story does go back to the 1700s as you mentioned andy um, they were laid out over private property with the owners being paid for the land uh, the transactions were then entered into the town record <coughs> Uh, and a, a thank you to Roger King for his thorough historical research. Uh, in 1939, the citizens of Deerfield voted to discontinue maintenance of the roads that make up the entire T, both yellow and orange, uh, on that color map. Um, the 1939 printed warrant article number five stated that the vote was to see whether to discontinue the roads subject to gates and bars. The handwritten meeting minutes state that the town voted to discontinue the roads. However, there is no record that anyone moved to amend warrant article five and there is no record of any vote to amend it. 
Robert Sanborn, an eyewitness in 1939 and a Board of Selectmen member in 1991, specifically confirmed that the printed 1939 warrant article passed without amendment. Uh, the 1991 Board of Selectmen resolved the confusion resulting from the conflicting records from that meeting after reviewing the printed warrant and minutes of the 39 annual town meeting and listening to the recollections of some who were present at that meeting in 1939 and who were familiar with the road, the board determined, that's the 1991 board, determined that Thurston Pond Road was a class six road. And it's also good to remember that the town had already bought and paid for these roads in the 1770s, and, that's, uh, and that does, does appear in the uh, re old, very old records of the town. Um, following a, a public hearing on September 16, 1991, they, the board voted unanimously to lay out and reconfirm the portion of the roads marked in yellow as Class 6 highways under New Hampshire RSA Chapter 231, 8, as you mentioned. Uh, signs were then posted on Thurston Pond Road identifying it as Class 6. Uh, those signs have been there for 30 years now. Uh, we asked to lay out the portions of the road where we owned land and hoped to build. Uh, as you mentioned, Andy, it's also worthwhile to look at the existing surveys of the land along the roads. Uh, most publicly available surveys along the road show ownership of the land to the edges of the road. Um, in 1981, before I bought my land, David Sidmore prepared, prepared a survey showing three of my parcels with boundaries that run along the edge of Thurston Pond Road and Ridge Road. That is plan 10222. It's recorded and dated as uh, 1st of February, 1981. That survey confirms that my ownership of the land does not extend to the middle of the roads. I own to the edges of those roads. The town owns the roads. And we ask the Board of Selectmen to act favorably on the petition to lay out and reconfirm these roads as class six. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Adams. Hi, Brian Adams, 40 Thurston Pond. Um, I just wanted to echo what uh, Ms. Bradbury noted. Uh, when my wife and I bought 40 Thurston Pond in 2018, uh, we reviewed all the documents with the previous owner, Kate Hartnett, and um, essentially, you know, it clearly states uh, the classic status as well as I reviewed um, the packet that you have as well going back to the 1770s all the way to the present and I just encourage the board to uh, reflect on this information and um, continue moving forward with um, defining the road as classics. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to note for the record here um, as, as Mr. Cross stated they had reviewed uh, the paperwork when they purchased their property and I had mentioned that there is one plan that does indeed show abutting landowners owning the property, and that's plan 41614. Uh, it's dated June 25th, 2019. It was stamped by Richard Bartlett and Associates, and it identified Ridge Road as a woods road and placed the boundary in the middle. And as I mentioned previously, this was for a, a little over 200 yards. Um, none of the other plot plans on record uh, that I was able to find showed that. And in fact, I, I reviewed three other plans. Uh, one that was just referenced um, uh, by Ms. Bradbury that it was identified as the Arthur and Marion Baker plan. Um, that was done in 1981, well before uh, the Board of Selectmen in 1991 took up the cause. So just for the record, I would throw that in there. Other people wishing to comment? There's no one else. Uh, Mrs. Menard and then Mr. Cross. Good evening. My name is Jeannie Menard and I live on 30, 36 Mountain Road and um, I believe that maintaining ownership of the Class 6 roads uh, leading to Thurston Pond reflect the common values and the shared vision 
of the majority of Deerfield citizens. Um, aside from the obvious recreational and scenic qualities that these roads uh, offer our community, um, I believe that the historical uh, preservation of these roads are under uh, valued for us in terms of like our master plan, but <clears throat> they are um, they represent the fabric of how our town um, has uh, come into being in terms of uh, they help support the maintenance of the rural character. We talk about maintaining rural character of our small town, and these Class 6 roads um, help do just that. So I won't go into, I'm sure others uh, have other reasons for their desire to maintain the ownership, but I see these are as, um, these Class 6 roads are a valuable asset to our town and I support um, your, and I'm grateful for the uh, formalizing the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, set the record straight and maintain ownership of our Class 6 roads. Thank you very much. Thank you. I recognize Mr. Cross. <clears throat> Ed Cross, 4th Thurston Pond Road. So I think um, a little I, I really appreciate the fact that there's so many people here. I was expecting more people to want to speak, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Um, but I, I did have a question uh, before I start, if I could ask a question. Is that permissible or you not? You can certainly ask a question. I may or may not be able to answer it. Um, so what specifically, if you have um, the purpose for relaying out the road, what is the reason for you considering relaying out the road in your words? Um, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself with regard to that. Uh, as I said, there was some confusion about the status of the road. Uh, the more uh, research I did, the more information I looked at, it looked to me to be quite clear that that road in its entirety was a class six road and had been purchased by the town of Deerfield. Um, and uh, clearly as a select board member, um, I don't think it's in the town's best interest for me to give up fee purchased uh, roadways or allow them to be given up um, while I'm sitting on the select board. And that would be my primary motivation. I don't know if any other board members um, wanna speak to that. I totally agree. Yeah, and certainly uh, this, would, this would clarify the situation with regard to uh, the ownership of the property, of the road, I should say. So I, I don't think anyone else uh, has an answer, right? So um, I know that there's been some concern um, in the previous meetings that have been held and in some of the minutes that have been spoke that I was reading, um, the, the challenge, part of the biggest challenge is the fact that the access to the town forest, for the most part, comes from that, um, that section of roadway. True. In that the problem that was um, stated is if, in fact, um, I did own that per my plot plan, that there was going to be some challenges of being able to gate it. Yeah, I have no response to that. Uh. Okay. Well, those were in the minutes. Okay. So I just wanted to state that. Yep. Um, in that that was part of the biggest reason for looking to relay out the road or to, or to at least straighten out what the issue is. I'm not opposed to getting this issue straightened out. I've said from day one, the biggest challenge I have is that my plot plan, uh, my survey that was done by Bartlett showed where the road um, was primarily on my land because of the status of what the town has in their records that it reverts back to a butters. I understand completely that it was a, it's, a, it's been a confusing issue for quite some time. It was back in 1991 when you were dealing with the other side up on Thurston Pond Road. 
And I think one of the things I just wanted to mention, and I think my son, you know, covered a lot of it, is that, you know, we bought the land with the survey, everything looked fine, matched the town records, pulled a permit, did all that legally. Um, that was actually um, submitted on March 9th. And at that point, we just started to do work on the lot itself by clearing, um, you know, as the weather got better. Um, you know, we started to actually do some construction. It wasn't until June 24th when I received a call from John Harrington, and I was actually on my way on a vacation, um, informing me and inviting me to an upcoming board uh, meeting to discuss the issues with the status of Ridge Road as a Class 6 road. So that's a long period of time. Um, I appreciated the fact that there was a call. There were three previous meetings, at least, that talked about my road, my in, um, I mean, my property specifically, and the, you know, the first part of one of the discussions was that yes, Mr. Cross in fact owns it, and then at the next or at another following meeting, it was nope. Now we see that the town owns it, so it was conflicting, uh, re you know, minute, minutes, and it was confusing, um, without a doubt. <clears throat> you know, the, the thing that probably troubled me the most was in one of the meetings, I believe June 22nd, there was discussion about um, the possibility of looking, in for a, looking into a cease and desist order. And just to be clear for what people may or may not understand what that means, you know, a cease and desist is an order to stop suspicious or illegal activities. And that really tarnishes potentially a person's reputation within the town because it puts speculation and suspect on these people for no reason. So that's what I took the most offense to in my whole position was that those words made it sound like Ed and Sandy Cross did something wrong. And I know I stated that in one of our meetings, but I wanted to be sure that with all these public people here that they were able to understand that. Because we followed, as Jacob laid out clearly, we followed all of the proper procedures, took my survey, got our um, septic design approval from the state of New Hampshire, did all the setback requirements that were needed, went in on Mar in March and filled out for a building permit, got a building permit, no hassles, no problems, no nothing, went in, just kept on moving forward with what our, pro what our, uh, you know, uh, what our process was gonna be for building a house. The biggest other challenge that I have is that it's unclear. It's not clear. You stated at the beginning of this meeting that it's not clear and that there's a lot of misinformation or misunderstandings of what the minutes say versus what the posting was versus what the vote was, and I understand all that. And that's why I kept asking, what do you have in legal documents that would be able to support the fact that my plan is wrong. And the whole reason for me wanting that document, which I was hoping to share with you in a meeting that wasn't in public, was the fact that when you transfer a piece of property, there is a specific question that's asked. And that question states, do you know of any controversy or unclarity on lot lines or anything else about abutting properties that you will have to disclose. I now, with everything that's going on, have to have a situation that I can show so that there doesn't become a title, in, a title problem when I transfer the title ownership of this piece of property to the next person. This, in this case, it's gonna be my son. So clarity is hugely important. That's what I've been asking from day one, and I need it to be done legally so that when the time comes, I can get this piece of property transferred. The challenges that I have is when I asked if the town would do the, the process of looking at the title and doing the title research to try to straighten it up and clear it up, my answer from the board was the town is not willing to or sees it necessary to straighten that out or spend the money to straighten that out. And again, that's a challenge that I have because now that means that instead of the town doing their due diligence and doing what's proper that they should have done maybe back in 1991, they're now in the same boat again of needing to clarify it. And all I've been asking for is clarification. 
and making sure that you do it proper because I need things to be right. In that, yes, I stated in one of my meetings, just because we said so wasn't going to be a good enough answer for me. I said that at the first meeting. I want documentation that shows it. We have never said anything about stopping people from accessing that road. We say hi to everybody that walks down that road. We talk to them. There's been a couple of people that have stopped several times to talk to us. Our intentions were never to do that. Okay, so I'm publicly stating that. We never intended to do anything different than just to live peaceably down in that road. So part of my challenge also One of the things that, is, that the town talked about or the select board talked about is the town forest and the importance of being able to access it. And I think that a lot of people here understand that that's an important thing. I think a lot of people here like to use that road for walk on. I can appreciate the fact that Jeannie you know, spoke highly about what, what the value of trailways are. I don't, I'm not saying or disagreeing with anything. I'm not disagreeing with what Joanne said and what her research says and what everything else that shows. I'm not disagreeing with that. I don't think it shows legal clarity just because she has those documents. It hasn't been put into any kind of a judgment to try to figure out is this right or is this wrong. There's still room for challenge because the town records conflict. And all I'm asking for the town to do is to fix the record so that there's not a conflict. Because the last thing I want to do, and I feel for Joanne, I don't want to deal with it 30 years from now that it's another problem. Some of the challenges that I think we have is the fact that the, you know, the town forest, if you look on the recreation maps, you're going to see what the town forest parking area is. And the town forest parking area right now is right at the road bend, right there on the sharp corner, the very corner that in one of your meetings was stated as one of the most dangerous corners in the town. So there is no parking for anyone other than parking on private property to get down and to be able to utilize that town forest unless they walk from wherever they're coming from. So there is no parking. And I would say, too, that the challenges that are, are left for that whole roadway system when it comes to public access is that the townspeople do not have a place that they can even park to utilize that whole roadway system. At the other end of Thurston Pond Road, which is where my house is and where my driveway is, I have people parking along the sides of that part of Thurston Pond Road, sometimes right in front of my driveway. Sometimes we can't even get in because they're using that as the parking area to access the roadway. So there's bigger problems than just what the status of this road is. The reality is, is that this roadway needs, or this town forest and this whole roadway system needs something better than what they have for the town to be able to access it and to use it. And I would suggest that the town look at what is the possibilities of putting some sort of a parking area on the town forest for the people in the town to be able to drive safely down, park in a very safe place, and use that property? I'm not against this being a road. I'm not. I'm against it being taken improperly, and I'm against it being taken without the right documentation because I need it to be clear so that our title can be sold again and again and not have to be worried about someone else 30 years from now raising a flag. And I think that is the end result that this board is interested in arriving at. Perfect. So then I have some thoughts here on that. Well, uh, first I'm, I'm going to ask if there's anyone else that wishes to speak. Um, and we've got two people, and I, I'd like to give s some other folks a chance to speak, uh, Mr. Cross, if you don't mind. As long as I can come back up after. Uh, you can. And I'm going to start with Mrs. Katie, who has actually been uh, followed by the gentleman uh, in the one, two, sort of fourth or fifth row there. One of the things about this is how long it's gone on. And their right to ask for the road to be laid out, that way it's there. But there's something that's been said that is not correct. 
let the record be clear that many roads were not, they didn't buy the land. All they bought was the right to pass on a road. The roads were laid out. I did a whole big research on what is um, the road that was discontinued when 125 was built in Brentwood. An interesting book to read is The Road Less Traveled by Bernie Waugh with all the laws on class six roads, discontinued roads, town roads, etc. It has all the laws there. But Thurston Pond has gone on and gone on and gone on. And I do think the selectmen owe it to the people who own property on Thurston Pond to lay it out. Joanne Wasson has maintained that it was closed in 1939. And I believe Joanne was right, but she did say one thing. When you approved the road, considering it a class six, that the town had the right to, that it was closed by gates and bars, you forgot to lay it out. And without it being laid out, it cannot legally be because it was bought only for right to travel over, not buying the land. Uh, in this case, I think there's actually some pretty good documentation that this was a fee uh, purchase of property. Uh, there are very specific uh, It may be, Joanne says it wasn't, but, and I, I believe Joanne has done more research in this town on deeds than anybody. I would agree. I just think that it's very, wrong to say class six roads were bought by the town. The right to travel over was, but not deeded land. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna recognize the gentleman who set his hand up several times. That will be you. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes, Spencer Tate, 174 South Road. Um, and I'm just hopeful to provide maybe a little bit of information in this. I don't really have a stake, uh, other than the fact that I do this professionally. Um, in the book previously referenced, A Hard Road to Travel, uh, the court asserts in David Hall versus Cameron, 116NH, um, once established, a highway is presumed to exist until discontinued. Um, only a formal discontinuance by town meeting can legally terminate the public's rights to travel on any public way. So for that, I would say the selectmen are correct in their stance of not doing any sort of title search or additional work at taxpayer expense for the benefit of uh, abutters <coughs> or potential benefit of abutters. Um, I'll further add that uh, in Devon Hall versus Cameron, the party asserting discontinuance has the burden of proving the discontinuance by clear and satisfactory evidence. The best evidence of discontinuance is the official record of the municipality. If gaps exist in municipal records due to fires and the like, the proponent may introduce circumstantial evidence such as deed recitals, actual use of the road, and other municipal records which describe the apparent status of the road. And so to that point, I'd like to add that the 1939 article language needs to be read and reviewed. Everything else subsequent may have been done illegally or legally but it's secondary to the, the, um, the vote of the people. It's made very clear in the RSAs and in uh, court opinion that it's the will of the townspeople at the time of the article that is the enforcement power of the, of the, lang of the language. So whatever the language was at that time, was the determining factor. So I'm not, I don't, I, you know, 1991, I was sucking my thumb. It's, it's, uh, it's I, I don't know what transpired then, but I guess I would, I would defer to the selectmen and the people of the town to really review the 1939 Article 5 vote and the discussions therein, um, which is all, I think, microfiched upstairs, and you can pull it up on the, on the website. It's available as a PDF, so there's no wool over anybody's eyes. 
Yeah, the Board Thank of Selectmen you. and Town Council have both reviewed the uh, the actual language of the warrant article, uh, the handwritten minutes, and the official minutes um, of that meeting as well. Thank you for your input. Um, before I go back to Mr. Cross, just to, to simplify this, I'm going to ask how many people are here this evening by a show of hands uh, in favor of the select board laying out the road and reaffirming it's a class six? And how many are opposed? Okay, thank you. That gives the board a good sense of people's thought process. Glad and, you asked. Um, at this point, anyone else wish to speak? Uh, yes, Mrs. Grieg. Ms. Grieg. Good evening. Thank you all for coming. Um, Denise Gregg, uh, Thurston Pond Road. And um, just two points. Uh, just to be clear, there was an official layout subsequent to the 1991 meeting. And the packet that's been provided to the board and that they've had an opportunity to review has all of the documents from the 1991 and the 1939 materials that were all reviewed by the board in 1991. Um, so the, the revisiting of a lot of that information, um, it has been abundantly clear that class six portion of Thurston Pond Road was, as Joanne explained, the period, the point from Mount Delight up to the outlet of the pond and down Ridge Road to where the driveway is. The board had opportunity to revisit that many times over the years, and again, that information was um, filed with the Board of Selectmen with respect to the classic status there. I want to just kind of pull back a little bit. I know we've had an opportunity to talk about the legal side of this, but I have a wonderful opportunity to sit and watch the, the use of Thurston Pond Road and it is one of those places that is a treasure for the town, and I strongly encourage the board to act favorably on the petition. We have people out there every day with every type of recreational use. We also have folks who are there to use it as a quiet place where you can have kids on bikes, older folks sauntering along, um, and I include myself in that. Um, and you have folks there who are out to visit the town forest. There's also folks going up to the mills, to Thurston Pond, to the mill site, and the historical areas. So there are a wonderful, it's a wonderful capsule of our recreational, cultural, and historical treasures here in town. Um, I understand that it's a lot been said. Mr. Cross has been our neighbor on Thurston Pond Road for almost 20 years and has passed those signs about the Class 6 roads. So, I, I, you know, I want to be sure that we're here understanding that it is an opportunity to resolve the ends of the road. Um, but I do hope that the board acts favorably on the petition and grants um, Class 6 status for those ends. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, can't see all the way to the back of the room, Mr. Rhodes. <clears throat> Errol Rhodes, Church Street. Um, I want to thank Mr. Tate for his elucidation, which I think uh, not everybody in the room has seen the whole packet. I also appreciate Mr. Cross's um, conundrum um, and having, um, I suspect, when he started out, limited resources to know everything about uh, what, what was. I think I'm in favor of, of the, the board um, relaying out this road and, and resolving the lack of clarity uh, from Mr. Cross. Uh, but I think in the midst of all this, I hope we don't miss the fact that we have a records problem in this town. And I think that needs to be seriously addressed so that these kinds of issues don't arise in the future, because I sympathize with Mr. Cross on the, the records side of issues. And, and that's something that we should listen to, obviously not the primary focus of this meeting, but something that in listening to everything, we should understand that that's part of the issue. And frankly, I'm afraid it could be a bigger issue going forward, um, given all the changes that we're about to see. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, if there's no one else that wishes to speak, I would return to uh, Mr. Cross.
<clears throat> I, I want to be clear. I'm not against this being a class six road. I'm not against changing the way everybody's been using that road for all the years, whatever they've been doing. I am very challenged with the incorrect records that could be very misleading for others, just as it was for me. And I'm not totally ignorant, but I'm not a professional either when it comes to reading those documents. I'm just like everybody else. I look at the plan, I check the records in the town, everything seems to match up. I purchased the land with certain expectations, I think just like anybody else would have. So I'm not arguing anything about keeping people from doing what they've been doing on this road. I'm all about them straightening out the status of this road to make sure that we don't have to have this argument. Where are my concerns now that we've been down on that road working? I see concerns where it's very difficult when you come up out of that road and there's two or three cars parked on that sharp corner. It's very difficult to see anything until you get up on the road. I think that there's a bigger challenge with parking. I deal with it down in Thurston Pond Road. I've been dealing with it for 18 years. I have never complained to anyone in the town about getting blocked out of my own driveway. I'm not saying that that's anybody in this room that's doing it. I'm just stating a fact that it's a challenge because everybody loves to walk down that road. Thurston Pond is a beautiful place. Looking at the historical bridges down there, down there, that's a wonderful thing. I bought the land because of all that. I bought more land because my son liked that too. And we came up with a plan for him to be able to live in the town he wanted to come back to live in because of that area. We love that land, we love using it. I've been neighborly to everyone that lives on that road. I've helped, I do my fair share. I maintain part of the 200 feet of Thurston Pond Road. I fill the potholes, I do what's, what's needed. Um, if I go out in the morning with my plow, I plow and clear it up. I know that um, Joanne and, um, and Kate in the past have paid to have that taken care of. Um, you know, Tom Stevens was the, the gentleman that used to plow for them for years. I'm very friendly with Tom. Sometimes on big storms, I would plow that road all the way down to the very end so that Tom would have an easier time because Tom worked really hard. He loved it when I got the front of the road done first because it made it easier for him to continue. I fixed the bridge, which is past my driveway when the railings got broke. I do my part in sharing on my responsibilities, and that's what I was asked when I signed that document 18 years ago or 19 years ago. Okay, I've done my part. Now I have a situation on the other side that's very confusing. In the town minutes specifically state that the road was discontinued. That's what the 1939 town minutes say. The vote was to discontinue. So I'm not the legal guy. I don't know that. What does that mean? Except for back in 1939, I think discontinued meant the road went away. But I'm not the guy here and I'm not arguing that. I can only say that the townspeople have the say. The townspeople voted. The townspeople canceled the road. It's been in records in there, reverts to a butters, probably ever since. I know it's been there since at least 19... 94 because they had the colorful map in there that was done just for the sake of people seeing it. So I can only go by what information I have. I, don't, I shouldn't have to research and do all of this kind of legal work to try to figure out why this matches this, but yet I'm told it's not correct. It's not against the road being a road. I am challenged with parking, and I really think that a solution needs to be given for the townspeople to enjoy the land that the town has been graciously given. And it's not being done. Now I'm the guy that's maintaining it. Mr. Stevens has been maintaining it for his access for doing his sugaring for years. He's done a great job at what he could with what he's done, okay? There's a lot of people that use that road. A lot of public people walk it. 
There's motorbikes, four-wheelers, automobiles going up and down that road all the time. So the reality is, is if we have agreements where abutters share the use of a class six road when it's unmaintained by the town, then I think that that's fair. And I really do think that the town, because of the fact that they have a town forest and that their concern is access to the town forest, I truly think that the town should be responsible for making it available to the public to be able to utilize properly. And I'm not asking for a million dollars of, uh, of aid here at all, but I'm asking if you're gonna open it up and because you're on a butter requesting it, then do your fair share. Okay, and what that can look like is something that I'm happy to have a discussion with the board on, on how that can be fair and equitable for everybody. And that would allow the townspeople to have access to that town forest in all that roadway without a problem. I'm even willing, because I need my documents to be clear, and I don't think that what you're about to do is going to make it very clear. I still think it's going to have controversy, at least on the section that I have. I'll do a quick claim deed. I'm happy to do something to make it so that myself, is ta I'm taken care of legally. I want it done right. That's what I've been saying since day one. Nobody came and asked me what our status or what our intentions were. Nobody's asked me for solutions. I find myself defending, spending money, defending the town records as a citizen of this town. I'm spending my money to defend their records because I'm told that the records are wrong. Yeah, I think we're getting away from the... We might be getting away from it, Andy, but I'm going to state my part because I'm telling you what. I just think that we have a solution or we need to work to a solution that's better for everybody. Well, I think and I'm happy to do that. I think that. you're getting repetitive about your comment now. We, we clearly understand your position. Um, we understand your situation. Um, if you've got something new to add, by all means. The only thing I really want to add, and I'm going to say it again because I'm not adding it, I just want to make sure that the town starts looking at an opportunity to make something better for parking purposes. I have some solutions in mind. Happy to talk to anybody about it. Um, feel free to come and see me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Uh, Mrs. Katie. Just a quick question. If legally the town closed it, not by gates and bars, how can the selectmen vote to change that without having it at a town meeting? Uh, RSA 231.8 gives the board the power to lay out uh, what was but an existing But that would roadway. be a class six road that wasn't closed with the land reverting to owners. That, that law refers to if a road has just been sitting there without a town vote. Like we know the law says if it's not used for five years, it becomes closed. Yeah, I'm not going to debate the legal uh, specifications of this. Uh, 231.8 was what was used in 1991 for very similar portions of the road. Um, and as I've said, we have multiple plot plans that show uh, the abutters' property lines at the edge of the roadway. Uh, we've been advised by town council that we can act upon this petition uh, with the authority of 231.8. I think it needs to have a town vote. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Further comment. Mr. Cross. I'm going to agree with what Mrs. Katie has stated that um, I don't think I don't think you have the authority to do this particular process the way you're doing it. I do think you can do it. I think it's a different process than what you're currently doing. Um, and it does, I believe, have to go through to town vote because the townspeople spoke once and the townspeople should be able to speak again. And I understand that it's going to be a yes, but I, and I'm not opposed to that. I want everybody to state that. But that would be the right way and the legal way to do it, to clear up everything. Thank you. Further comment? OK, 
Okay, seeing no hands, I am going to close the public hearing at this time. Oh, uh, I would also mention that uh, we did receive three uh, letters uh, in support of uh, laying out the road as a Class 6 road as well uh, from people that uh, couldn't be here this evening. Um, so that said, I'm going to close the hearing. Um, at this point, I don't know what the board's pleasure is. The board could make a motion in favor of the petition at this time. We could ask for one more final review from town council before we do that. Um, we're, we're not under an obligation to make a decision immediately following the public hearing. Um, I, I don't know what the board's pleasure is. Can we make the motion subject to the legal? Uh, you, you could make the motion to uh, support the public hearing subject to legal opinion, but I think it might be cleaner if that's what we want to do, that we actually hold off and... Is there any need for us to do go legal? Um, all the homework that's been done? Well, uh, you, you've heard some people say that they don't feel this is appropriate and that it could be open to challenge, so... Uh, the, only, the only question I have is the specific language that we'd end up using to, for the layout. That's what my problem is. Okay. Uh, given that, uh, those, that concern, I think that possibly we should have uh, town council give us one final review and advice to make sure uh, that we make the motion properly if that's right. what we're going to do. Oh, I'd prefer to do that way. Okay. So I um, hate to drag this on a little bit further, but uh, it looks like we are indeed not going to make a motion this evening um, on the petition. We are going to hold off until we get one final review and advisement from our legal representation. And I would thank everybody for being here this evening. Um, you are welcome to stick around. We're going to talk about town budgets. Uh, <laughs> moving forward, and uh, I'll, I'll wait a minute or two for folks to leave Good job. okay I'm gonna call the select boards uh, regular meeting of 927 2021 to order and we're gonna start with the Pledge of Allegiance thank you to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Okay, this is not on your agenda, but I am first going to recognize Haley Andrazi um, from the Conservation Commission to review uh, their quarterly report, and we do have written copies of this uh, in our correspondence, and you should have a copy in your file as well. And welcome, Haley. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm here on behalf of Chair Sarita Fry, who typically gives these updates on a quarterly basis, but she has a course conflict this year, or this semester at least, so I'm here at least this meeting and maybe the next one. Um, so my understanding is that she typically just runs through kind of the major points that we've shared with you and she so does. I'll prepare to do that. Um, the first item is related to a conditional use permit that was brought to us by Eversource in preparation for their presentation to the planning board, um, at which point they shared that there would be some temporary impacts to wetlands with work that's happening on a transmission line here in Deerfield. And while the impacts to the wetlands themselves were temporary, there were anticipated permanent impacts to the adjacent uplands immediately on the edge of the wetlands, specifically to some vernal pools that were identified on that transmission line right of way. And so we expressed our concern about that situation to the planning board in a letter prior to their presentation to the board. Um, the next item is related to research that's happening or has happened in part on Arthur Chase Town Forest. We were approached by a PhD student at UNH, Andrew Butler, who asked for permission to conduct, conduct some of his graduate research on the forest. Basically, he's partnering with New Hampshire Fish and Game to take a look at how to measure fur bearer abundance in the state. Um, and so part of his research involved deploying trail cameras on Arthur Chase in the summer, and then this fall doing using tracking stations to look at what fur bearers occur on the property and in what numbers. That's been exciting. Um, in terms of membership, we have the a full commission for the first time in many years. Um, we've been joined by new members Josh Freed, Chloe Gross, and Errol Rhodes, and we have Joanne Bradbury on as an alternate, and all have been sworn in and really great additions to the commission. Uh, Lindsay Flanders Conservation Area is an item that I believe has been on the quarterly update previously, um, related to some undesirable activities that have taken place there, specifically target shooting and ATV use. That's uh, created some trail issues. 
And so the Conservation Commission has purchased some signs specifically related to snowmobile, ATV, and dirt bike use and the fact that those are not allowed on the property. And volunteer Alan Perkins has installed those. And pending some site visits from various members of the commission, you know, we may or may not need to fix some um, breaches in stone walls or areas where trails have been rerouted by those ATV users. I'm going to skip the next one for now and move on to wetland zoning which I think most are aware the Deerfield Conservation Commission had discussions with the planning board for a couple of years uh, to update the wetland zoning ordinance and put that forward at town meeting in 2020. It was approved by a overwhelming majority of the town in 2020. And then over the last year or so, the planning board has begun discussions about revisions to that ordinance um, and are currently planning for a potential uh, warrant article at the upcoming town meeting to make those changes. I believe the Conservation Commission is going to be on next week's agenda. We've gotten bumped a couple times just because of cancellations. Um, but to have discussions and ensure that, you know, what we felt was integral and um, uh, what the town voted on is upheld, basically, uh, in, in any potential revisions or changes. Uh, we were also at Old Home Day, where I think many other boards and commissions were present as well. One of our new members, Chloe Gross, created a great um, display on what the Conservation Commission does and had great discussions with townsfolks, and so that was great to get the word out about our commission. And then the last item, again, not the last one on this list, but the last one I'll bring up is related to Zoom meetings. And so since returning to in-person meetings in the Conservation Commission, we've had the discussion that it was quite beneficial for our work, both in terms of being able to have people participate in our meetings, but also our participation in meetings like this or planning board meetings um, where people in the town and community members are able to attend virtually. And so not suggesting that you know the committees or boards would not meet in person, obviously that's required by RSA, but that there be some sort of hybrid option where folks who, like tonight, who want to attend a public meeting would be able to tune in and listen in and maybe provide some feedback via Zoom. And so we know that and we acknowledge that that's going to require a pretty significant technology upgrade for the town for mm -hmm. that to be the case. Um, and we also think it would while you know it's not mandated by RSA, it could become somewhat of our town culture to, you know, have t boards and committees make it an option for people to participate virtually. As someone who just handed off my one and a half year old outside to my husband who wanted to come <laughs> to the public hearing, uh, you know, it would be it would be make it so participation could be increased in town. And myself, having been to more planning board meetings, you know, during the pandemic than prior to or after the pandemic, it really made it accessible for people to stay involved and know what's going on. So the commission would like to see the Board of Selectmen in any way possible, whether it's, you know, putting some of the CARES Act funding, you know, we know that discussion's being had towards technology upgrades, um, you know, s supporting any statewide legislation that does come up related to virtual participation in municipal meetings, um, you know, whatever it may be, we'd like to just ask that the board consider making that an option for people in the community. So with that, that is our Conservation Commission quarterly update. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Does anybody have questions for Haley? Good job, thank you. <laughs> I've heard uh, the same comment with regard to uh, Zoom meetings as well, with regard to the activity by the planning board as well. And, uh, and, and as you say, I think we'd probably have to have a, a significant ex expenditure with regard to uh, upgrading the capability, but I think it uh, is probably something worth considering. Yeah, it was really helpful, I think, even for cross-board or cross-commission um, collaboration for, for instance, the Conservation Commission to be able to, you know, at least tune into planning board meetings and hear what was going on and vice versa. So I think even in that sense, just to have informed community members, um, it's, it just provides another option to kind of broaden participation. Great. Other questions, comments? Hearing none, I would thank you for being here this evening. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'll stick around for the, to present my budget, but <laughs> okay. thank you. And actually, um, what order do we have you? We've actually got you last, Haley, and you have a fairly small budget, so if the board doesn't mind, uh, I would just as soon keep you at the microphone and hit the Conservation Commission budget if we could. If that's fine with everyone else, I'm happy to. 
find it. Did now it's out of order. In my <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Cindy's going to be upset. <laughs> and um, I, but I will say that I was kind of relying on uh, watching someone else since this is my first uh, budget presentation after a long tenure by Eric Berglund in the treasurer position. So this is my first term as treasurer. Um, so, but I guess I would just assume you want me to kind of run through the major yeah. line items. No. What I'll do is yeah. um, I'll go ahead and announce the uh, okay. request for the budget. So the 2020, the 2022 um, planning board request, and that is page 78 for anyone trying to follow along in their budgets. Oh, okay. 78. Almost towards the end. And uh, the request this year is for $3,299, and that is up $498 from the prior year. Um, does the board have questions? We had fairly significant backup from the Conservation Commission. I think it's all in the part-time secretary. So I mean, believe it is, and yeah. I think they changed the hourly wage. Yeah, that's been a request we've put in since, you know, we've put in a uh, request to increase that budget line item since 2017. Um, basically, over the same period of time, our secretary's um, hourly rate has been increased to reflect the rate that was being offered to new hires in town. And, you know, as a result of the default budget being you know, the deferred budget being used for the last several years, we've had to cut the hours that she is supporting our commission um, with not desirable results. So we'd like to be able to offer her her full appropriate hourly rate for the full number of hours that we were previously able to access her services. Does anyone have any questions? I'll make a motion. We approve the budget of $3,299. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and that takes care of it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And you too. Okay, now we can go back to our regular budget order, which uh, kicks off with the town clerk tax collector budget, which is page three. And I would recognize the town clerk, tax collector, and the deputy. So we have a requested budget of $139,266. Uh, this is up $19,516 uh, from the uh, previous year. And I believe a good chunk of this is uh, going to be outlined uh, by Kelly, I'm assuming, with regard to uh, wage equity adjustment. And okay. I would give good the floor evening. to you. Um, so I hope you all have had a chance to look at our equity adjustment proposal. And what we are asking for tonight are two things. Uh, one, that you approve our budget, and two, that the board will place a warrant article on the ballot for voters for the equity adjustment. And my question to you has, have you all had a chance to review it? Uh, yes, I've certainly had a chance to review it, Kelly, and um, I think that uh, that's a wise strategy. Um, your office uh, is very favorably uh, received here in the town, uh, at least as far as I'm aware. And uh, I, I think we're likely, uh, you know, to see a default budget we have in years past. And, uh, and I discussed with you a little bit that that warrant article could be worded so the warrant article would be contingent upon the budget not passing. So if the requested budget passed, then the warrant article would go away so there wouldn't be a potential double hit. Um, Correct. And I, I think that uh, in general, the uh, town clerk and tax collector's office has been well supported by the town. Um, and uh, I also uh, don't believe that you have uh, come to us very frequently uh, looking for an increase in, or a wage adjustment. And uh, I, I think you've done, done your homework well and, and made a great case for it. Thank you. I don't know if other board members have comments or concerns. I have a few, few questions. Uh, with regard to mileage, we're looking at a, That's where I'm at. A, a substantial increase on that. 
you you anticipating driving you know, incurring more mileage uh, than what you've done in the past or, or have we not been compensating you in the past um the mileage line is currently the line is 400 or was 400 and um, kim and i drive the deposits to the bank every day so any time that we drive to the bank to make the deposits, um, we're accruing, accruing mileage. So we're just increasing that line to cover what um, our mileage expenses actually are. So the... Yeah, I can see if you look back a couple of years, you were actually close to $3,000 in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the other option, because the town... Um, we have to drive our deposits to the bank. Some towns utilize a service, but that averages around $500 a month, four to $500 a month to have a secure service, drive the deposit. It's cheaper doing it this way. Yes, it does, definitely. Um, with regard to the auditing services, uh, there's a, we got looking at a 1700 almost $1,800 increase there. Is that uh, we have a different auditor or? We have a different auditor. They're very thorough. And um, obviously there's a lot to audit in our office. So mm -hmm. <laughs> the, um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the auditing line has sort of stayed where it's at for the past few years, but it really hasn't gone up and their prices are increasing as well. Yep. That's, I guess that's probably it for me. <clears throat> Other questions or concerns for Kelly? I make a motion to approve $139,266 budget for the town clerk tax collector. A second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no, uh, Fred? Yeah, I think uh, in, in your backup with regard to uh, justification for the increase in the, in the salary, uh, I know people will ask, well, what about Northwood and uh, Epsom and at Candier and, uh, and Nottingham? And I, I don't know if you can take and do a comparison that they, they're not full time or that the, the, the tax collector is separate from the yeah, town clerk. We're all very different. Um, our offices are very different. We're so different from Northwood, how we're set up. We're so different from Candia. We're so different from Epsom. Um, what we did when we prepared this is it was a challenge for us to find because we're a combined office, we're town clerk and tax collector. The town clerk, tax collector is full-time and the deputy is full-time. So we had to find towns that were similar to us with a full-time clerk collector and a full-time deputy. So um, those were why we chose the towns that we did and the positions that we did because they're kind of like us in, as far as their setup. But um, the New Hampshire Municipal Association also has a wage and salary um, study and all that information. So we, it'll, it's very easily and accessible to find out all of those positions. It's, it's actually already out there. And we have a copy of that, that, yeah, huge, that huge spreadsheet. Yeah, we have a huge spreadsheet with all that information. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say that uh, just to be prepared for okay. coming up the uh, budget committee and also uh, at the deliberative session too, to be able to take and, and provide specifics with regard to how we're different than Candy yeah. and, and uh, Nottingham and Northwood. Okay. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that feedback. That's good. Okay. So if there's no further discussion, those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Appears to be unanimous, and uh, we will work with you on crafting a warrant article as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to do the meeting one real quick? Sure. That's what we have up next: town meeting and elections on page six. And we have a requested amount for 2022 in the amount of thirteen thousand five hundred ninety-nine dollars, and this is uh, about four hundred dollars less than. Last year's budget. Motion to approve. 
<laughs> Actually, I'm sorry. No, it's 4,000 less than more. 2020. <laughs> it's uh, about $4,500 more than than this present year's budget. And we do have the backup on that. More meetings, correct? More. Yep. Mm. We have a deliberative session, three elections. Um, the increase in our maintenance line um, is up because it's $350 per machine per year. So that's why that's up to $700. Uh, Malloy Sound is up in the event that we have to prepare for COVID or pandemic precautions. Um, and then, oh, and the other thing was, I did change the um, the election worker pay rate from seven twenty five to eight dollars. It's been a long time since poll workers have had an increase. Questions? We need a second. Second. Oh. I didn't hear you got a motion. motion and a second. Yeah, okay. I did the motion before you. Who's the second? Cindy. Cindy. Okay, further discussion. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it appears to be unanimous. And we can move on to information technology, that being page eight. Thank you. And we have a 2022 request in the amount of $61,088, which is up uh, a little over $4,000 from the prior year's request. And we've got the backup, and do you have, uh, are you able to present a synopsis, John? Yes. Um, Steve has uh, <clears throat> numbered all of the exhibits with backup right behind his uh, worksheet and they're all numbered if you have any questions about anything specific. Um, printing prices have gone up for newsletters and the voter's guide and the town report all comes out of his budget. Town uh, report comes out of the IT budget? It always has. It's, that's where all the printing comes from. And it looks like telephones are the other big? Telephones are big. Um, his salary line, again, because we've been in a default budget, has not kept up with the COLA increases that the board has given uh, over several years. Um, contract prices have gone up uh, for some of our vendors. And maintenance support that covers uh, some of the software that we have to buy in case any of that uh, goes out of date. But his uh, equipment line is down actually $26, which is a first in a number of years. All of our equipment is fairly up, up to date and uh, current. So uh, questions on this budget? Motion to approve $61,088. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Further discussion. I think you know Cindy had some questions. Yeah, what the, what's the virtual town hall yearly maintenance? What is that for 25, uh, 2250 or 2260? Where, what line? Am I on the right one? Yeah. So in uh, you want backup, to backup yeah. page eight. That's for $2,260. Oh, I'm sorry. That that's for our web page. We pay twenty five just for the maintenance. Yes. What's the <laughs> in motion web hosting email? That's kind of. I think that's the that's for our domain. Again, with the town website. Has Steve returned to work yet, or is he still working from home? He still works remotely. He comes in when needed.
And I think the maintenance and support is is actually a, a pretty important uh, component of the the website because we do uh, financial transactions online over our website. Mm -hmm. Well, it just seems different than what's the Harris the, module. The Harris is all of our um, MuniSmart. That's all of our financial software, our accounting software, um, assessing software. All of those prices have increased over the years, but our budget has not kept up with them. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion? All right. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Here's the unanimous. Which brings us to the Municipal Budget Committee budget which I'm assuming, is this a, a new figure that we got from Bill, John? This is the, I've talked to Bill Von Hassel. He uh, said to go with the uh, numbers that we had last year. So this is what he's gone with. So we have a request for $1,279, which is actually $337 more than last year. And I think that is all in the uh, employee line for. Correct. Keep, for the transcriptionist in order to keep them uh, level funded with the other transcriptionists throughout the town. Discussion. We'll make a motion to approve the budget of $1,279 for the budget committee. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. There's no further discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next we have emergency, uh, we have town hall on page 22 and this is a revisit from last week and I believe there were questions about total of R.B. Lewis expenditures. I believe the questions were what do we pay R.B. Lewis for annually and I have those figures for you. Uh, the annual monitoring fee that uh, used to be covered by Skycom uh, is $3,548 and just for everyone's uh, edification at Skycom used to charge us $4,260. So we did save uh, town spending in that area. The other annual maintenance fee that we pay for is the sprinkler inspection. That is $2,875. Previously with uh, uh, Grinnell, we paid $3,151. So we've realized the savings in that as well. I think that was the R.B. Lewis the question was R.B. Lewis, each building. It seems to be a price for each building. Where is the contract for R.B. Lewis? May, when we brought R.B. Lewis on, I thought we had a contract. R.B. Lewis comes under government buildings for the uh, annual maintenance fee and monitoring. Any sprinkler fees go under town hall. And then any other charges you see throughout the budget is when there is a repair or service needed to a particular monitoring system throughout the town. Which is R.B. Lewis. Correct. They do all of our servicing. Right. That's, that's what I was asking about R.B. Lewis's contract. What is their contract? It, it, you've got... We only have two contracts with them. One is the annual inspection of all the buildings mm -hmm. and the monitoring and the security features. The other one is the sprinkler system. Anytime there is a service or repair needed for any of those systems, we call R.B. Lewis. They have been our vendor of choice. And the town hall is the only one with a sprinkler system? Correct. Okay. This, none of the other buildings have sprinkler systems. So we have the requested town hall budget of $33,952. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Appears to be unanimous, John. Which now moves us to emergency management, which is page 42 on the budget. Uh, 
Emergency Management Director Denny Grieg with us, and we have a budget request for 2022 in the amount of $7,088. This is down a little bit from the prior year of $7,363. And do you want to give us a quick overview, Denny? Um, good evening. Uh, not a whole lot to add. Um, the pretty much the prices of uh, the uh, generator, diesel, all those things are dependent on the rate set. Um, not a whole lot of alteration and um, anticipation of returning somewhat to normal, hopefully in the next year. But uh, we don't have any major equipment changing. We've been taking advantage of grants as, as available. Uh, the town EOP grant finished up. So um, no particular uh, plans at this moment for uh, another grant that line has just been kept open so other than that thank you at a busy year otherwise but dick how do we <clears throat> excuse me denny justify 1817 for telephone how, how many would there be uh so there's two emergency management directors uh, well one of the charges is is for um computed aided dispatch then the other two charges um, so for two telephones, uh, for two persons. Okay. So, cause we just saw 444 on somebody else. IT, I think it was. And yeah, we've got two Verizon cell phones, 900. So that would be 450 apiece. Thank you. Sure. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Further discussion. Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Okay, that is unanimous, John, and we move to Welfare Administration. That is on page 42. And 66. Uh, 66. I'm sorry, 66. Corner, John. Um, and we have a budget request of $71,522. This is up slightly from the previous year, which was at $70,297. Um, and I would invite uh, Welfare Director Greg to walk us through any changes that are significant. Andy, it's Greg. Greg, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Um, it's been Greg all night. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically uh, it's pretty much level funded. I believe the, the only difference in the salary line, uh, line is whatever COLA we got, because it certainly hasn't gone up otherwise. Um, we have a deputy welfare administrator position as well, um, although we've not had to use that. Uh, pretty much the general appropriation line, we request the usual amount. We've been fortunate in that the actual expenditure has been um, relatively stable. Um, the level of assistance out there is um, some of it's starting to fade uh, in terms of some of this, the federal programs are going away. Um, the, the biggest chunk um, of uncertainty surrounding, surrounding the welfare budget is obviously housing costs. Um, we're at pretty much a zero vacancy rate with respect to available rentals. Um, the eviction ban is pretty much gone, so um, the 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 choices that come along with respect to housing are, can be very difficult. We've been fortunate. We stay. Um, one of the things that I do is stay uh, very abreast of a lot of the changes that come along um, with respect to housing opportunities. But it is a very difficult situation, and unfortunately, one that breeds uncertainty. So that's. Uh, Kind of where we are with respect to that. Motion to approve seventy-one thousand five twenty-two. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion or questions? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we can move to uh, social agencies. Uh, Director Greg, <laughs> if you could. <laughs> 
Uh, we have a request in the amount of $38,816. This is up a little bit from the prior year. Uh, we do have a list of the agencies that um, we, we provide uh, financial backing to, and uh, Denny has given us uh, a description of each of them, and typically they also provide us uh, background as to how many community members uh, they may have served or had interaction with. So um, the really uh, this the amount provided to social service agencies is actually level funded. It is the other part of this, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but the uh, primary difference that we have here is that um, we've actually dropped the amount of uh, assistance to Lamprey at their request as uh, Lamprey has given up the senior transportation um, route and has, we have switched over to Meals on Wheels so that the van that Lamprey offered for senior transportation has basically, that service has been taken over by Meals on, Rockingham Meals on Wheels. Um, and we've also added another uh, service agency one Sky, and uh, this is a group that works with um, developmental uh, persons with developmental disabilities or acquired brain disorders. And we have 24 Deerfield individuals um, who participate in that program, so we have added them um, this year. And so, the other part is the testing and physicals that. Are Yes, that's not my part, the upper part, the 1582, so I'm going to pass those over to John. <clears throat> uh, that you see appearing in every year's budget, that's uh, part of the National Fire Professional Association 1582 uh, testing, which uh, requires all firefighter rescue folks to have a baseline uh, physical where they check for physical examination, blood analysis, pulmonary function tests, chest x-rays, EKGs, cancer screening, uh, amongst other things to provide uh, baseline uh, physical information for all of the first responders in the fire profession. Uh, with uh, so much information and study done of illnesses that uh, fire professionals suffer as part of their work, uh, this is recommended and we have put it in the budget again. Again, this doesn't cover every uh, per personnel in the department. I think it starts at nine and then yeah. if we can get that uh, passed in the budget, we will add more as it goes. Okay, so that's a fairly significant increase there and we're just looking to add more actual testing? Correct. That pays for approximately nine exams. Mm -hmm. We hire nine firefighters a year. We, I don't know if we've had this test done on the existing uh, department personnel. This would pay for it. Wasn't this in last year's budget? It's in every budget, but when the budget doesn't pass, that money is not included. So therefore, I do not believe the exams are being done for baseline. And why isn't, the, I know I asked this last year, why isn't this in the fire budget instead of Denny's budget? Uh, this is where all the employee physicals and testing line has always been. It covers all of employees' okay. physicals. I agree, it's kind of hidden. I didn't. Well, I asked this last year and just because it's, that's where it's always been isn't a good answer to me, but okay. Well, um, to my understanding, um, to set up this budget, there are certain categories that DRA requires you to put budgeted monies in, and I believe this is where employee physicals land. These codes are set by DRA, not us, and I can certainly check to see if there is a line in the fire rescue department budget that DRA has set aside for physicals. If there is, I will move it. If not, it will likely have to stay here but I will check. It's only fire, not police or anything else? It's for all physicals for all town staff. Uh, when highway has to go get a physical for their uh, certification, they go. Yeah. When the police go, it's all charged well, that, to this That's line. for 5280 is for everybody, and then the 4500 yeah. is for fire. Correct. <clears throat>
Further questions? Could you use a motion for the $38,816 amount? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, those in favor? Aye. Okay. And that takes care of our budget work this evening. Thank you, Denny. Thank you. Have a good evening, Denny. enough so the pages all stick in the middle okay moving to our regular business we have outstanding minutes from September 20th 2021 so second discussion hearing none those in favor all right okay are accepted We have an accounts payable manifest in the amount of $21,782.19. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. In correspondence, we have uh, planning board minutes and notice of a Deerfield zoning ordinance. Uh, okay, the notice of a public hearing to consider approval of a major application for the Pleasant Lake Watershed Protection Ordinance. And this is for land development on property located at Three Willow Lane. And the date of that is October 13th at 7.15. Mm -hmm. um, we have a report from the State of New Hampshire Board of uh, Tax and Land Appeals. This was uh, John and Lorena Cinnamon versus the Town of Deerfield. And with one small adjustment, the BTLA found in favor of the town's position um, on that property. And the complete order is in the correspondence file if you'd care to review it. There's also, I believe, documentation from Avatar with that. In the signature file, I'll start with the assessing file. We have uh, an application for renewal of a discretionary preservation easement and this is essentially what's known as the barn easement and this is for property at 70 Church Street and that would be uh, the barn that's attached to Mr. Rhodes uh, mm -hmm. historic home at 70 Church Street and the board would need to make a motion to renew the easement so moved second okay. discussion Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Multiple places to sign here. Actually, it looks, I guess there's only one. I'm seeing some other stickies with it. And we have a report of timber cut from Stephen Sanborn, 165 Middle Road. And uh, this is a request to levy the timber tax in the amount of $1,190.29. And we have the yield uh, verification attached. And we'd need a motion to levy said tax. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two places to sign on this. A 
I would note that my signature gets significantly worse if I haven't hmm. eaten dinner by 7 o'clock. <laughs> We also uh, have a letter that uh, we were going to send Peter Shibblehoot, the chairman of the Deerfield Planning Board, uh, regarding uh, concerns about the uh, situation um, with regard to a proposed subdivision on Range Road by uh, Mr. Edward Cross. And we were asking him to hold off until we had verified the status of um, Ridge Road. So did he get sent yet? No, we need to sign it. And send we'll it sign to it. Him. He'll get it for the next plan. And board we meeting. had we had made a motion to do this at the last meeting, so we just need to sign it. Yeah. And uh, maybe if you could uh, email a copy of that to Peter as well, John, mm -hmm. just so he gets it in a timeless fashion as possible. as well. At this time, I would look to Mr. Harrington for the town administrator's report. I have no updates for the board this evening. Great. Unfinished business. Mr. McGarry. Yeah, the uh, I had dug out a few uh, RFPs with regard to uh, the property or for design bill for the mm -hmm. uh, police station. And uh, they're the ones that are more, more detailed than what uh, was done for Farmington are fairly extensive. <laughs> and the question I had is that uh, it would probably end up being a lot of work for, I guess, for John and I to try and put something together and whether whether we think we should be uh, asking for a an architect or whatever to who's familiar with uh, design build contracts to be able to take and put together an, an RFP on our behalf and uh, I don't know what how the board board feels with regard to uh, to that I I would certainly uh be in favor of that and have looked at some sample RFPs as well and uh, some of the ones I looked at particularly from the seacoast towns were in excess of 20 pages with fairly uh, fairly elaborate legal language mm -hmm. um, I don't know how the rest of the board feels or and I, I don't know what it would cost but I'm assuming we could get an estimate of what a formal RFP preparation might cost us and move <coughs> forward once we had an idea of what we were actually start. talking about we get that we could get started yeah. Certainly what we'd need would be uh, whoever John was able to contact that uh, they would need to have some some experience in, in uh, design build RFPs if, uh, if we can find somebody. Okay. Other unfinished business? Not just what we went to that company for in Rochester for. What they were going to give us, no? They gave us a contract rather than... than an, uh, and we're seeking just because of the amount of money involved right. we're seeking other options but other unfinished business Fred um, this is uh, with regard to the uh, the public hearing on redistricting uh, I understand that you're not going to be able to attend I am NOT going to be able to attend and I did clarify that this afternoon um, I'm getting off the ferry at uh, 1230 and have to take my daughter to Logan Airport and drop my wife off to pick up the dogs and I suspect that I'm going to be nowhere near Brentwood at 6 o'clock. Okay. Who do we, who do you want to uh, have attend that on behalf of the board? <laughs> if you're able to do that, uh, select board member McGarry, it would <laughs> Yeah, I would uh, certainly be willing to and, uh, and uh, and it, unless unless any anybody objects, I could uh, convey that I'm speaking on behalf of the Deerfield Board of Selectmen. You got my vote, Fred. Okay. I think we were all in agreement. Yep. It was a unanimous vote. And, okay, thank you for doing that. Other new business. 
Hearing none, I'm going to mention that uh, I have uh, no specifics at the moment, but I am considering a career change that may well impact my ability uh, to serve on this board or to serve on this board on Monday nights anyway. And uh, we'll just throw that out there for the board's consideration as we move forward, and I will certainly follow up with uh, more exact detail as I have them. Would this be a situation where another night would be more appropriate for you? Uh, it, another n night might well work uh, for me, but uh, as I said, as, as I get uh, a little bit more firm information, which will be in the next 48 hours, um, I will get back to the board. But okay. just wanted to put that out there, although everybody in the state already seems to know that I was <laughs> 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 contemplating possibly moving. So. But I'd certainly be uh, be uh, amenable to a to a change in uh, evenings. If yeah, I'd have no problem with Tuesday if that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would <coughs> be I'll, easier some weeks. I'll be back to the board uh, this week as to my status. And if there's no other new or other business at this point, I would look to citizens' comments. And. Whoever is closest to the microphone, please take it. <laughs> First, I believe if you look in the town reports, there never was a town vote on laying out the road. And I don't believe Joanne Wasson would be wrong in stating that the selectmen never did have a vote to relay out Thurston Pond Road. But I'll leave that to you to disprove. Um, is there a way the town gets a report on the amount of timber sold to know that they're getting the correct timber tax? Or is it only the estimate that the owner puts down on the... Um, uh, no, there is a certified report that comes back before we levy the tax. The owner puts the estimate on the intent to cut, and we get a sort of, I don't have the folder in front of me, but it's stamped on the back with the uh, state official that certifies <laughs> the, the yield on timber. Good, thank you. And that is, for each, each and every time we levy a, a timber tax, uh, we do have that final uh, report of production and what was taken. And I would appreciate if we could have something on the um, design build report, maybe uh, in your next mailing. I don't hear anything here, and I haven't seen any postings for a meeting of the committee that would um, allow me to go and hear what the committee came up with. Mm -hmm. uh, I look for the posting in the post office, but I've never seen one, so I, I don't know. We, ha we haven't held any meetings of the original site committee. Um, and so for, now yeah. when you've come up with design build, we don't have information distributed to the town. I would just like to know how it came about and um, what the proposal is. Mm -hmm. At this point, there is not a proposal, but as soon as we have concrete information, we will certainly make that available. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Scheigel. Yes. Thank you. Um, just because I'm interested in redistricting, can I just ask where your meeting is going to be? I know it was Andy and now Fred. Is it a private or is it a public meeting? No, I just... this is a public hearing at the Rockingham County Courthouse in oh. Brentwood, New Hampshire on Tuesday, October 5th at 6 p.m. Okay, that's great. 6 p.m. Okay, great. Um, and my other question, please, is um, what would be the next step or the process you would take in regards, I'm sorry, to the, the public hearing we just had with uh, Thurston Prawn Road in regards to clarifying that whole picture of Thurston Har uh, Road being a scenic road as far as getting to a town vote? Like, um, would we, what would be the next step after you talk to the town council, which I know you're going to do, um, and 
in order to get it on record and get it clarified, because there seems to be so much confusion about it, we should definitely kind of make it, I believe, a town vote, uh, only because I think then it'll be on record that, you know, what it is and what it isn't. I mean, it's, you know, I think clearly it's going to be a positive, but it needs to be certainly put on record. So I just wanted to ask, what would be the process to get to that point after you speak to the attorney? Well, depending on what the attorney tells us, there are two possible outcomes. One, this board acting on their authority under 231.8 could simply declare the road a class six road and lay it out as such. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other, I'm, I have not put as much um, energy into the specifics of uh, having a town vote, but I would assume yeah. that if the board decided that they did not want to do that and wanted to put this before the town, that they would float a warrant article. Or an article. That's what I figured to go, just to have it on record. And um, we'll miss you. I just want to tell you that on record that you know, you know whatever you decide. You know, God bless you, and I hope all goes well. We Thank will you. miss you. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, the, with regard to the layout of the highways, uh, RSA 231 one is uh, very specific that uh, the in cities it'll be the uh, mayor and aldermen, and in the uh, for towns it's the selectmen. Uh, of the town or the commissioners of a village district, so it uh, yep. pretty pretty accurate, pretty clear. Hi, Denise okay. Craig, Thurston Pond Road. I just want to clarify, and I'm going to hand this to Miss Katie, um, which is the documents that we had supplied to you. So she has an opportunity to review the documents and see that the layout was uh, completed. The process was completed from the 1991 era and and that also um, all of the documents that we had referred to, I want to be sure that she has that and understand that it's, yes, the RSAs which grant the board the authority to do this. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for providing that information. Make a motion to adjourn 715. Second. Those in favor? Aye. All right. Which town?